I'm about to show you how to fix issues that happen with the L1 and R1 buttons on DualSense controllers. Issues such as pressing on their own, not registering a press, getting stuck, feeling mushy, or making an odd noise. The cause is typically one of two things, debris getting into the button or components within the button wearing down. The first solutions I show you are simple cleaning techniques, but eventually I start showing things that involve taking the controller apart, including how to replace parts. Start with the easy things, and if they don't solve your issue, continue through the list until the issue is resolved, or until you reach the end of your comfort level. Note that the DualSense Edge is not featured in this video, I'm just talking about the standard model DualSense controllers. However, you might be able to improvise using this video if you do have a DualSense Edge, so just keep that in mind. It may seem weird to take such a kitchen sink approach to fixing these issues, but have faith because through this channel I have helped thousands of people fix their controllers with this same approach. The comments on the other videos speak for themselves. No tutorial is going to have a 100% success rate, but I do estimate for this particular video that at least 90% of you will be able to fix your L1 or R1 issues. Let me know if this video worked for you, and if so, what part of the video helped you the most. The first thing I'm gonna have you do is take some thin cardboard from some kind of household product that you have laying around and cut a triangular piece out of it. And then take that triangle and stick it into the gap around the button and move it around. Try doing it while it's pressed and while it's unpressed. And also press down the trigger button beside it and lightly scrape that gap in between them. If one point on your wedge gets mangled, rotate it and use another point. You don't want pieces of cardboard in that gap. The idea here is to scrape any residue that may have accumulated around the edge of the button, which may interfere with its operation. Or you may actually have one big piece of something in there, like a fingernail, and if so, hopefully this will push it out. You're welcome to go back and test the controller right after you do this, but you might want to just go ahead and do the next few things I show you because they're simple to do. The next thing I'm going to have you do is to tilt your controller in a way so that the problematic button is facing down and then start slapping the opposite side. Do this with and without the button pushed. And also do it while you push the trigger button down. Doing that opens up the gap between the buttons which may have debris in it. The idea here is to slap any debris that's hanging on in there loose and have it come out the bottom. And this is a good follow up to scraping it with the cardboard because you could have scraped some stuff loose and this will hopefully knock it out. You'll only be able to do this next thing if you have a vacuum cleaner with a nozzle like this. It's simple, just turn the vacuum cleaner on and then apply suction to the button that's giving you the issue. Do it with the button pressed down and with the button unpressed. And also press down the trigger button. This particular method is one of the most effective ones that I show you today, so hopefully it works for you. Get a straw or something similar and blow into the gap around the button. Once again, do it with the button pressed and unpressed and also press the trigger button and blow into that gap that's in between the buttons. You can also use canned air, or some people just put their mouth directly on the gap and blow that way. At this point in the video, if you haven't tested your controller, go ahead and do it because all these cleaning methods may have done something. Another option you can consider is to simply give up on fixing the button and reassign it to one of the other buttons that's on the controller. To do that on your PS5, go to Settings, Accessibility, then select Controllers on the left and Custom Button Assignments on the right. Enable the first option here if it's not already, then select Custom Button Assignments. Select the button that you want to become the L1 or R1 button. I'll choose square. Then select R1 or L1 from this menu. The new mapping will appear. Notice it switched the two buttons. So my L1 is now the square and the square is now the L1. If you want to proceed, select apply. 
If you're someone who doesn't have the PS5, but you still use a DualSense on your PC, you should be able to find a similar menu setting. It's my understanding that there is one built into Steam. There could also be a game-specific one that's built into the game. Now we're gonna start taking things apart, but this particular one is pretty easy. I'm gonna have you pry the button out. Preferably, you should do it with something plastic. Stick the tool under the edge that's next to the trigger button, and then just pry it. No matter which one is giving you an issue, go ahead and pry up both of them, the R1 and the L1. I'll explain why in a minute. Now that they're both out, we are going to do two things. We're going to clean the newly exposed area where the button was, and we're also going to inspect the button itself. Let's start with the cleaning. Tilt the controller so that the gap are facing down and slap the handles just like I showed you earlier. There's a better chance of dislodging debris since the buttons are out of the way. Also do the blowing method again. Go ahead and do this cleaning on both sides. Now for the inspection. Hold the two buttons together and compare them. Does your problematic one look worn out or broken compared to the other one? If so, go ahead and replace it. You will find sellers on Amazon and eBay who sell replacement buttons that are new. Sometimes it's a whole set of buttons, so you might have to get more than what you need. The reviews on many of these are mixed, so just be careful what you order. Another way would be to buy a broken DualSense off eBay and take the button off that one. You can find some of these for cheap, but be careful, you could end up with one with the exact same broken button. There's an extra complication to replacing that button, and that is there's two variations of it. Notice the one on the right has a longer but skinnier shaft. The replacement you order needs to be the exact same kind that you pulled out. There's actually been four versions of the DualSense. Versions 1 and 2 have the old L1 R1 design, and versions 3 and 4 have the newer design, the ones with the skinnier shaft. These versions are also referred to as generation numbers, and also by the BDM numbers that are on their circuit boards. When you're doing your search, try using some of these terms in your search. For example, if you want to find a replacement for your L1, and it's the kind with the thicker shaft, do a search for DualSense L1 button BDM10 or do the same search for BDM20. The buttons pop right back in and you can go ahead and test again. If it still doesn't work, consider the next solution which is much more intensive. This solution involves inspecting and cleaning the padding that's under the button and cleaning the contact point that's underneath the padding. In order to do all that, we have to remove a lot of components, which is made even more complicated by the fact that there's four versions of the DualSense. Some of the components are fragile as well, so it's possible you may break something no matter how carefully I describe things. Note that if something does break, there are replacement parts you can find on Amazon and eBay. Either way, please proceed at your own risk. I suggest you watch this entire segment first before deciding whether or not to proceed. To get started, make sure you have pried out both the L1 and R1 as shown in the previous solution. Now we're going to remove this black strip Use something to pry up both the sides of it. I've been inside this controller a lot, so my strip is a little bit looser th than yours, so that allows me to use my fingernails. Once both sides are snapped out, you can work your way toward the middle and pry up the front side, and that will allow you to take it out at an angle like this. There are now four screws exposed. Go ahead and remove those. For some of you, the screws will be black. Don't worry about that difference. The closest fitting bit would be a size 00 Phillips. There are two plastic shells covering everything and we need to separate them. Start with one of the handles and just start pulling it apart. Once you get some separation in the handle area, concentrate on the middle by sliding these two tabs out of position. This will make the whole top come loose, but before you separate it, put the controller in an upside down position.
Now we need to go deeper into the components surrounding the L1 and R1. Those components will look and disassemble differently depending on which of the four versions of the DualSense that you have. Luckily, I have all four versions on hand and I'll be able to give you separate instructions for each one. First though, we need to figure out which version you have. Luckily, it's super simple. Go back to the lower shell and scan the QR code. Since it's tiny, you have to zoom in on it with your camera before it detects it. This will make the serial number appear on the screen. The second digit of that number tells you what generation it is. So if it's a one, it's a generation one. Disregard the other digits. And by the way, this scheme only works for the standard DualSense. I'm not talking about the DualSense Edge. At this time, there's only four gens. If Sony decides to release a fifth one and you detect it with your phone, you may need to improvise as you proceed with this video. By the way, I made a separate video that goes over the major differences between the four versions, including how they feel, how much they weigh, and so forth. I'll put a link to that video in the description if you're interested. Now that you know what version you have, let's continue with the solutions. If you have a Gen 1 or Gen 2, stay here. If you have a Gen 3 or 4, skip to the appropriate timestamp. For a Gen 1 or 2, you first need to slide this tiny microphone ribbon from the little tray that it's in, like this. Just let it hang out. If the square piece comes off the ribbon, it's no big deal. Just set it aside for now. Now unhook this tiny ribbon here. Lift the battery up and let it dangle off to the side. In case you're wondering about the tape, I added that myself a while back, so don't worry about it. Remove the screw that's within the battery holder. Lift the battery holder out. Unhook these three ribbon cables. Set the battery back onto the board like this. And flip the whole thing over like this. Be mindful of the wires as you flip it over. You don't want to pull those loose. Remove this little speaker and set it aside if it hasn't fallen out already on its own. At this point, if it's a Gen 1, you'll see four screws. If it's a Gen 2, you'll see only two screws. Remove all of those, regardless of whether you have four or two. Now lift the black frame away from the rest of the DualSense and do that without snagging the ribbon cable that's at the top. There's another microphone right here. Sometimes it'll fall out. If so, slip it back in. The slot it goes into is on the other side of this. But if you turn this over, all these buttons are gonna fall out. So try to slip that microphone back in without flipping this over. Flip the backboard into the position it was before and place the battery back where it was. And hold it all as you flip it over. This will reveal more screws. Remove the two screws that are on the side of the button that's giving you the issue. Doing this releases the entire button mechanism so you can just grab it. If you wanted, you could just replace this whole thing and that will likely fix your issue. There's people that sell them on eBay. To my eyes, the Gen 1 and Gen 2 ones look the same, but just to be safe, if you're buying a replacement, get one that matches your Gen exactly. However, this whole solution segment is about getting to the padding, and that's what we're gonna do. There are three screws on this side that we need to remove. These take a smaller head, a 0000 Phillips, and after those are removed, flip it around and remove this tiny ribbon and remove the one screw that was under it flip it back around and you can remove this cover and lift this piece out There is a pin that holds the trigger button in place. Go ahead and pull that out. And then remove the trigger. 
You can now see the padding. Go ahead and lift it out of there with some tweezers or something. By the way, if this gear comes out this side, just place it back in there. It all goes together pretty easily. Take the padding over to the sink and rinse it because it could be dirty and that dirt could be causing your issue. I advise against using alcohol on the padding because it might affect the black coating that's on it. Also inspect the padding for damage. If you see any, just switch it out with some new padding. Once again, my eyes don't see a difference between the Gen 1 and Gen 2 padding, but I could be wrong. Then go ahead and clean the contact point that was under the padding by blowing into it and then pass over it with a dry q-tip and then pass over it again with some alcohol on the q-tip. When the alcohol is 100% dry, we are done with this solution. So here's how to put things back together. Put the padding back in like so. Then hold the trigger button into position and stick the pin back into it. This can be very tricky to do because that trigger button has to be situated just perfectly, but keep trying. Put this little piece back onto the pin. You have the ability to set it at a lot of different angles. I go ahead and just set it at a straight angle, if that makes sense. And then put this cover back on. Put these screws back in and put the one on the other side back in. Plug the tiny ribbon cable back in, put the mechanism back into place, and put the two screws back into it. Place the microphone back into this hole. The two little legs on it need to be on the right side. Place the black frame back inside the shell, but make sure the ribbon cables don't get crushed under it. The top one has to be fed through a tiny slot Put these four screws back in if it's a Gen 1. Put only two screws back in if it's a Gen 2. Flip the board back into place. And once again, don't crush the ribbon cables under it. Plug these four ribbon cables into it. Put the battery cover back on. And then put the screw back into it. Place this microphone back into the slot that's on the battery holder. If the little square thing came off of it, there is a slit in it, which allows you to place it back onto the ribbon. This is what it should look like when you've added it back on. Place the battery back into the holder and tuck its wires in. Place the back cover back on. Snap it into place, starting at the top and working your way around. Place your L1 and R1 buttons back in. At this point, you can go ahead and test. If you want to finish everything, put these four screws back in and then place this little cover back on, starting in the middle. If you tested it and it's still not working correctly, there is one more solution and you'll want to jump directly to it at this timestamp. If you have a generation three, then you have the easiest path. Remove these four screws only on the side that has the issue. Remember that you have everything face down, so don't get confused about which one has the issue. Now pull up this corner here and the whole panel will pop out of place, allowing you to remove it. Next, go ahead and remove this thing, which for me has already fallen out of place. Then pull this pin out. Which allows you to remove the trigger button. You now have full access to the padding. Take tweezers or something like that and pull it out. Take the padding over to the sink and rinse it because it could be dirty and that dirt 
could be causing your issue. I advise against using alcohol on the padding because it might affect the black coating that's on it. Also inspect the padding for damage. If you see any, just switch it out with some new padding. Then go ahead and clean the contact point that was under the padding by blowing into it and then pass over it with a dry Q-tip and then pass over it again with some alcohol on the Q-tip. When the alcohol is 100% dry, we are done with this solution. So here's how to put things back together. Put the padding back in like so. Then hold the trigger button into position and stick the pin back into it. This can be very tricky to do because that trigger button has to be situated just perfectly, but keep trying. Put this little piece back onto the pin. You have the ability to set it at a lot of different angles. I go ahead and just set it at a straight angle, if that makes sense. And then put this cover back on. And put the four screws back into it. Place the back cover back on. Snap it into place, starting at the top and working your way around. Put these four screws back in, and then place this little cover back on, starting in the middle. Place your L1 and R1 buttons back in. If you tested it and it's still not working correctly, there is one more solution, and you'll want to jump directly to it at this timestamp. If you have a Gen 4, you first need to slide this tiny microphone ribbon from the little tray that it's in, like this. If the square piece comes off the ribbon, it's no big deal, just set it aside for now. Now lift off the battery and lay it off to the side like this. Remove this screw. Lift the battery holder out and set it aside. Now we're going to remove the trigger button, the one that's up against your problematic L1 or R1 button. we have to remove this rod that goes through it. You can see the end of the rod right here on one side, but you can't see it on the other side. However, there is a tiny little hole and you can see a tiny piece of the rod in that hole. We're gonna stick something in it and push the rod out the other side. I'm gonna use a push pin, but if you have a sewing needle or something similar, that might work too. Once there's enough of it sticking out, grab it with pliers and pull it out the rest of the way. Now the trigger can be removed. For whatever reason, I still have my L1 in its spot, so I'll pry that out. You now have full access to the padding. Take tweezers or something like that and pull it out. Take the padding over to the sink and rinse it because it could be dirty and that dirt could be causing your issue. I advise against using alcohol on the padding because it might affect the black coating that's on it. Also inspect the padding for damage. If you see any, just switch it out with some new padding. Then go ahead and clean the contact point that was under the padding by blowing into it and then pass over it with a dry Q-tip and then pass over it again with some alcohol on the Q-tip. When the alcohol is 100% dry, we are done with this solution. So here's how to put things back together. Put the padding back in like so. Then hold the trigger button into position and stick the pin back into it. This can be very tricky to do because that trigger button has to be situated just perfectly, but keep trying. Put the battery cover back on and then put the screw back into it. Place this microphone back into the slot that's on the battery holder. If the little square thing came off of it, there is a slit in it, which allows you to place it back onto the ribbon. This is what it should look like when you've added it back on. Place the battery back into the holder and tuck its wires in. Place the back cover back on. Snap it into place, starting at the top and working your way around. Put these four screws back in. Place your L1 and R1 buttons back in. 
and then place this little cover back on, starting in the middle. If you tested it and it's still not working correctly, there is one more solution. The final thing to try is to replace the conductive film that you cleaned with alcohol in the last solution. Just a warning, this can be very difficult and there's no guarantee that it'll solve your issue. Actually, if you have a Gen 1 or 2, it's kind of easy. Just remove the entire mechanism like I showed in the previous solution, but this time instead of cleaning the contact points, just remove the ribbon that the contact point is on and then replace it with a new one. That's all I have in this video for Gen 1 and Gen 2 people. Thank you for watching. If you're a Gen 3 or 4, those contact points are part of a large piece of conductive film and we need to go deep inside to free it. Disassemble things once again until you get to this point. Lift the battery up and let it dangle off to the side. Slide this tiny microphone ribbon from the little tray that it's in like this. Remove the screw that's within the battery holder. Lift the battery holder out. Unhook these four ribbon cables. Remove these two screws. This is where they are on a Gen 3. This is where they are on a Gen 4. Now lift the black frame away from the rest of the DualSense and do that without snagging the ribbon cable that's at the top. Flip the board over like this. Be mindful of the wires as you flip it over. You don't want to pull those loose. Remove both the trigger buttons as I showed you in the previous solution by pulling out the pin. If you have a Gen 3, you will have to remove the remaining screws from around the trigger mechanisms, but Gen 4 you will not. Then remove the padding again. Start removing the conductive film. It's held on by a series of hooks. Part of it goes through a slot that's on the other side of the board. Sorry, I didn't film a good angle here. There are parts of the ribbon that feed into the L1 and R1 areas, and those just pull out kind of easily. I'm not sure if the Gen 3 and Gen 4 film is different, but just to be sure, order the one that matches whatever generation you have. Place the new conductive film back into place, the opposite way in which you took off the older one. Put the padding back in like so. Put the trigger button back on and put the pin back into it, just like I showed you in the previous solution. If you're Gen 3, put everything back together like I showed before and put the three screws back into the area around each trigger. Flip the board back around like this. Place the black thing back into the plastic shell. Put these two screws back in. Connect these ribbon cables. Put the battery holder back into place. Put the screw back into the battery tray. Slip this little speaker ribbon cable back into the tray that's under the battery. Flip the battery into position. Place the back cover back on, snap it into place, starting at the top and working your way around. Put these four screws back in, and then place this little cover back on, starting in the middle. Place your L1 and R1 buttons back in, and that's the end of the video. Let me know if this video resolved your issue. By the way, there's a couple more videos on the screen that might interest you. Thanks for watching.